All right, welcome back to the MLG World Final here. We are getting ready for what may be the last match of today. We got to find out which team is going to secure that spot against Monkey Business at the beginning of the championship playoff bracket. I'm Cottle Guy. I'm going to be joined again from Cap and Nahaz. Welcome back, gentlemen. So game one, as we saw between Secret and MVP Phoenix, was pretty one-sided here. We got to reach out to MVP now and what they got to do to take this to a three-game stretch. What can they do, Cap? I mean, I really liked whenever the MVP game was going on, Jacob was just like, Omni Knight, Omni Knight, Omni Knight. I don't know, I think they need something like really off the wall that kind of fits their play style and mm. is also a little bit different just because of the fact that I don't really see MVP Phoenix being able to beat a team like Team Secret with traditional strategies. What about a Warlock maybe? I'm fine with the Warlock too. I'm down with that. Yeah, An old classic, of course. We've for talked MVP. about that with March, but I, honestly, I think I think Team Secret showed up to play. Uh, I think the Veno counted them so hard. That was actually I didn't get a chance to to look it up because the game ended so early. That was actually the uh, in the top ten in terms of hero damage per minute ever on a Venomancer in pro play. Uh, just a convincing performance. I I don't think if you're Secret that you can go away from the early pressure game that's gotten you this far. I think as simple as it is, I think Thebon put it right at the very end. They just need to find they need to find a way to pick different heroes and play the same style. Well we gotta see what kind of heroes are gonna be able to reach out for here. So we already theorycrafted or try to theorycraft Omni Knight and Warlock, <laughs> but we gotta be serious here. You know, uh -huh. big starting with the bands now. What was the something most effective? Is it that Ember Spirit? Do you not allow even Envy to get anything comfortable for him? Ember seems like an easy reach out for him. Removing that or at least keeping the Night Stalker available. It's got to start at the beginning of the draft, gentlemen. I feel like uh, if you don't have first pick, you still have to ban the Doom. Okay. Um, because it's just a really versatile hero. Um, I guess from there, you could probably ban away the Ember Spirit, though you're obviously going to just leave something else that Team Secret is going to be just adept with. So, um, But I, I think that would be a decent opening. I think you just have to be able to have a better plan in your opening to be able to yeah. get the advantage of the first pick. I, I don't sure. think you can really, if you're MVP Phoenix, Mm -hmm. I don't think that you can afford to first ban the Meepo. I really don't. I, yeah, I, think I think so. Meepo is obviously a hero that in, in Wii's hands a lot of people are afraid of, but it is a hero that's counterable, and it's a hero that's actually counterable with some of the heroes that they're good with. It, it's a hero that is vulnerable to a little bit of early pressure, so yeah. I, I felt like it was a bit of a mistake for them to pay, place so much focus on that hero with a ban last game. Yeah, I think you can take it out maybe in the 3-4 ban, right. but... Um, I mean, if they really want, say, like, the, the problem's going to be is that if you want the Queen of Pain in your first 1-2, for example, like, you can't really afford to leave the Meepo out there and, like, first pick the Queen of Pain or something like that. So I think they have to, if they're going to, and I agree with you, I think they shouldn't put as much pressure on the Meepo ban. Um, if they're going to do that, though, they have to make sure that they also don't, you know, try and pick up a hero that's really susceptible to a Meepo pickup and, and maybe almost force Secret to go for a Meepo 1-2. Okay. Um, you want to be able to, to keep your lineup just ready to uh, essentially counter the Meepo, but don't, I, I think you don't want to ban away in the first one, too. I think there's too many other valuable bans. Yeah. So if they do hand over the Meepo, let's say, and they try to prepare themselves for what is to come with the Wii Meepo, what are some of the topics you could probably go for to shut it down? The old days, you thought about maybe like a Wyvern Earthshaker, but those don't seem to really fit the bill. So do you instead think of something like more hefty and, you know, hard-hitting burst like Alina and just focal to, you know, focus down one Meepo to try to annihilate it? You well, then the MVP Phoenix could actually get the Amber Spirit in their hands, right. um, which true. would actually be a great pickup. Um, then the Meepo, like the Nets, don't really mean as much against an Ember Spirit. So you obviously have that great Battle Fury Slide of Fizz combination. Um, there's also uh, just some other, like, overall valuable heroes that they would be able to get out of that exchange as well if the, the Meepo is picked up in the first one, too. You know, you might be able to get your hands on the Doom, who's uh, just going to be valuable through and through. You have, um, I mean, like, honestly, I think the Earthshaker is still really valuable when you have a Meepo on the enemy team. Um, whether it's going to be an offlane, I'm, I'm, I'm not valuing him as, in, as an offlane as much anymore. I really think the four position for this patch, just because the offlane's opened up. Like well, the yeah, there's so much more you can do, and I feel like mm -hmm. in the last patch, the mentality was let's let's just pick a hero like an Earthshaker or a Clockwork that can keep the lanes back, that can be assured of soaking a couple of levels early on because we're not really going to get much done in our offlane anyway. Now we're seeing what so many teams are doing with these aggro dual lanes to so yeah. much effect. It, it's almost like that passive offlane mentality is just gone. 
Uh, I, I think in terms of the Meepo pick, there's, there really is a lot you can do. And, and for me, it starts with the lanes. You know, as, as long as that hero isn't in a hugely favorable lane matchup like against a Queen of Pain, I think that hero can be pressured early and can be shut down. Uh, it, it needs quite a bit of babysitting unless it has a very favorable one-on-one -on -one matchup. Yeah, to build on that, by the way, the, the offlane meta, I mean, if you guys remember, like 6.84, there was like four viable offlane heroes, right, and now right. we're seeing heroes anywhere from like the Doom obviously being like highly prioritized, all the way going to like, I don't think we've seen it this tournament, like Batrider, right? Like all of a sudden he's made a resurgence, you know, when the hell did that happen? But yeah, girl! I think the offlane has just opened up so much that you don't want to lock down your offlaner um, in the first one, two. You don't want to get like something like a necessary, like even Clockwork, unless it's a really good Clockwork player or it serves a very specific purpose, it almost feels like um, the Clockwork isn't valuable yep. enough as in, in the offlane with many of these greedier drafts. I agree. I agree. No, you're seeing a lot of Clockwork games uh, this weekend in particular where the Clockwork player, unless his team is ahead, unless they're really the ones that are being able to push where the fights occur and do the initiating, uh, the Clockwork just can't keep up and farm with some of these other offlane heroes. Do you remember olden days offlaners had to be a secondary jungler as well and stuff? Do you think that is just going to be too inefficient to be a thing relevant anymore from here on out with Dota, or is it just something that comes and goes? I mean, I think it's so good in theory. The problem is that it was so good that a lot of the heroes that could do it just got nerfed into the ground. That's true. Yeah, And we're still pretty heavily in a stack meta. Um, you look at, like, the most valuable um, mid laners right now, SF, he farms up stacks. You have the, um, the Ember Spirit who goes through stacks pretty quickly. You also have the Templar yeah. Assassin. Not regular stacks, but Ancients there. Um, I think that we're still pretty heavily in that, that sort of meta, so you, you take away a lot from your other cores if you're going to run an offlaner that actually utilizes the jungle. And I think that's also why we don't see many four-position junglers um, as well. We don't see any Chens or Enchantresses that often. If we are seeing them, it's oftentimes in some sort of like really aggressive position, like we've seen the Enchantress before. That's actually one of the more interesting things, I think, if you want to get a little bit, well, it's me, I'm going to get a little bit nerdy, but if you want to think about projecting where the meta goes, uh, because that that's really been challenged a lot lately. You've seen in this tournament a lot of those greedier uh, picks have been really pressured early on, haven't had a chance to go into that jungle and make their hay. Yeah. Now, we are still attempting to load in. I've, I've been peeping over a bit, and we're giving it a second hurrah here, but I don't even know if this load is going to be going through. And Gentlemen, as we get to the back end of our first GSL format group stage action here, let's let's think back. What do you think has been your favorite matchup so far coming to this point? For me, and I'll let you have a moment to think, earlier today, seeing that secret for CDEC matchup was pleasant. That aggressive juggernaut was just something to behold. And it's something that I think that we'll be talking about for a while whenever we get to see CDEC play, especially going into probably tomorrow. I really enjoyed my um, EG versus um, VP matchup. I mean, they're two of my favorite teams. Mm -hmm. um, these are two teams that did very well at TI, obviously, and two teams that also kind of suffered. And I think they they made a really good showing. The fact that EG was actually able to get into the playoffs and the fact that VP actually put up a, like, a really good fight, um, even if they did get knocked out. I, think that they still showed a lot of their strength. Yeah, I, uh, I still, the moment of me though, the moment of the tournament so far, still for me, is the very first series on the very first day where that monkey business team came in, got just flat out knocked on their faces in game one against EG, and really were able to come back in the next few games and respond. And, and I mean, they look like almost the favorites in the tournament right now. Oh but yeah, I EG agree. certainly has, de has delivered uh, late last night and then just now delivered probably the two most memorable series of the tournament. Yeah, if I, if I was to lay down bets, I would actually say that uh, Monkey Business for me first place, Team Secret second. I mean, I think Monkey Business look incredibly strong. You have very Secret versatile. over EG. Um, yeah, I actually do have Secret over EG right now. Um, I mean, they showed a little bit more strength, obviously, in their match against VP, but I feel really confident about Secret. I think that they looked um, pretty good at um, ESL 1 New York. I really do believe, like, Eternal Envy uh, believed that they would be able to beat uh, Vega in a best of five, and I kind of agree. I think that that's um, the strength of Team Secret yeah. is shown in longer series, and as this tournament goes on, I believe that they're just going to get better and better, and uh, I really think that this team actually, I know you've actually said this specifically, that you feel like this team actually has perhaps a higher yes. skill potential, or a higher potential as a team than the old Team Secret. I, I really do, and I, again, you know, we're talking about New York, and I, I loved 
the the response of that team after the final. They were mad. I mean, yeah. they they were there was no hey guys, our first turn big tournament as a team. We did pretty well. They were mad. They said, you know, we should have played better. We should have won. And I I actually I had to talk to we and say, look man, you you did some really good things this weekend. Don't don't take all the negatives. Oh I mean, yeah. Because he looked amazing in some of those games and, and he really responded well to that i think i think these players are they have the right makeup to learn and improve as a team yeah i think they're the the perfect like all-around team where you've got this like raw talent um with weha and then you've got these like really intelligent and experienced players with um Highlight Eye, like there's a lot of uh, theory crafting behind, behind Highlight Eye right. and Puppy. And then you've got all this experience in Misery, who's going through this new role as well. Um, that I, I think it's just an all around great makeup for a team that is going to be very hungry. Well, look at it, gentlemen. We got a draft. Apparently, one of the other casters Woo. didn't want to load in, so we kicked them the hell out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get Let's out. out and now we're going to move into the action here. An already early Ephesus secret. Going to be banning out the Wisp to lead things in. And now we got a question. MVP Phoenix. Yep. They will not have first pick, so I was going to say, do they remove the Doom? My question has been answered. But I think I like we're going to see the second ban really, really define a lot. I, I, yeah. I think we'll know right away with the Meepo because I do think there's a good chance that if they don't ban it, the Team Secret will pick it first base. Team Secret probably going to ban the SF here. Radiant Sight SF makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, uh, it's Kyo Hero as well. Yeah. I, I really like the Wisp Band just because, I mean, you know, MVP Phoenix backs against yeah. the wall. They want to go for Wisp Bristleback. I know? prefer this, actually. I, I really, I know you beat it last game, but just having seen what, what March can do with the Spirit Breaker in the past, this was going to be my choice for them, and I think that's a smart band. Now Phoenix need to decide what else do they risk leaving out there. Last draft secret snagged up that Ember Spirit. Do they anticipate that that could be something again, or do they risk letting it go in hopes that they could pick it up for themselves with their one-two punch? We'll have to see. I mean, I, I really do agree with the Ember Spirit because if you go, um, if you allow Team Secret to pick up the Ember Spirit, this puts um, even, you don't want to pick up Queen of Pain necessarily into the Ember Spirit. Like, it's, it's just hard because the chains locks you down. Ember Spirit kind of serves as, like, the pseudo counter to the Queen of Pain in a way. So um, it's not only just about, like, leaving a good hero out there. It's also about that first pick and what, you know, kind of limits your response, essentially. Right? And, and obviously, Queen of Pain hasn't had that much success, but it's still one of the, the higher prioritized mid heroes that's in the pool. Back yeah, I, I, I think you could I think you could ban the darks here against Secret. All right, the toss you know what? That's that is the best choice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Phoenix were able to snag that Tusk up in the previous series for themselves and this time they're not gonna risk handing over to Secret. And Secret wow. are gonna grab Night Stalker, and maybe wow. preemptive just in case MVPs do want to grab the Ember, they'll now have the Night Stalker on their side. So Blitz and I were having a conversation with uh, Misery actually about um, offlaners right now, and I was I was just really interested in his perspective as a as a player who's you know obviously branching out into the offlane and has a lot to learn, um, and what his sort of thoughts were on the offlane process right now. And I asked him, you know, it seems offlane is really the position to be because it's opened up so much more. And he and he said, yeah, the, the, a lot of the offlaners that um, that you're not seeing. Um, in previous patches, they're so much stronger right now. So a lot of Night Stalker you're going to be seeing um, moving forward. There's just too much advantage to be had as he's a really nice aggressive hero. And yes, there are hit and misses yeah. with him, but vision is like vision is the end game, right? When it comes to the, those mid to late game team fights, that's what Night Stalker brings you. And it's it's so hard to actually beat that out in a defensive position or an aggressive position. It's still like vision is king past 35 minutes. So if you're able to have that Night Stark on the late game, yeah, he may not be able to provide the same kind of damage that you have, but you gain such an advantage when it comes to just moving around the map that it's well worth it um, in exchange for, you know, other offlaners that might be able to provide better team fight. Um, and, and you're pretty much in this meta, I think, unless it's a very one-sided game, you're pretty much guaranteed to go to 45 minutes at the very minimum. Yeah, I also like the flexibility of the hero that it can slide into that four position if necessary. I really like this open Earthshaker. I I still can't figure it out. Haven't seen he him in a really while. Really struggled this patch. Huh. He's he's been you know 37 percent, 38 percent win rate uh, in a lot of these games. But I, I think I think the Quap Earthshaker or the Shadowfiend Earthshaker opens, especially Shadowfiend Earthshaker on the Radiant side. Very very strong, flexible opening too. 
Why Earthshaker here and now, though? Is this MVP Phoenix trying to reach back a bit from 6.84, having that comfortable mid Earthshaker to back up the Shadow Fiend and make those stacks for him? That seems like something we, we would have seen like a month ago. Well, I yeah. just think it's just such a virtual mirror. It lets you, lets you take the pressure off the SF in the mid lane, but also lets you roam around early on if you want to. And, and they'll go ahead, Will Team Secret, and take that Ember Spirit. The other, other advantage to first picking the Night Stalker is that you know that long silence is not going to be there for you to worry about if you for, if you pick the Ember Spirit yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It, uh, Night Stalker actually offers as probably one of the most significant counters to heroes like Ember Spirit and Queen of Pain, um, as you said, because of the long duration silence. And Ember Spirit now, they actually work really well together because they come online around the same time. Like, you're going to have that secondary nighttime where I think Team Secret are just going to put so much pressure on MVP Phoenix, and they don't actually have the best heroes to respond to that kind of in-your-face aggression with tankiness, right? Because the Night Stalker actually has a lot of tankiness to himself, and the Ember Spirit does as well. In, in these early fights, that's why he's so viable as kind of this brawling hero by 20 minutes is because of Flame Guard. Like, magic damage is the primary source of, of damage in the first 20 minutes, so Flame Guard means a lot for your survivability as an Ember Spirit, so um, he's going to be able to, like, they're just going to duo up, essentially, I think, in a lot of these fights and make these kind of just run-at-you plays, and MVP Phoenix may not be able to respond very well, especially with a hero like Earthshaker. I'm, I'm with you, Nahaz. I'm not really a big fan. Like, I, 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 Earthshaker is my hero, right? When somebody comes up to me with a poster, I sign Earthshaker, but in this in this patch, I do believe that he needs to be dialed down when it comes to your draft drafting. Uh, he doesn't really belong in the first one, too, in my opinion, uh, because he doesn't really finish the offlane anymore yes. as well as he used to. And as a support, he's still kind of susceptible to a lot of the openings that certain heroes like Night Stalker, Spirit Breaker, these kind of heroes are so aggressive and in your face that Earthshaker doesn't really respond very well to them. Um, but I, I think you're right. The main point is going to be that the Earthshaker is able to stack up for the SF on the Radiant side right. and still be able to provide um, pretty quick jump into that middle lane if there is going to be some sort of gank. You sign Earthshaker? Wow. I sign Earthshaker. Not AM? You know Not what I signed? All right, so are we going to see a Meepo, guys? Oh. Still on the table. They, the MVP I mean, Phoenix has left it on the table. You do have the Earthshaker, the counter, but I, I don't think Seeker is scared of that hero. I think SF is pretty good as well against, okay. um, against Meepo, just because the amount of magic damage that you're able to lay down um, in a very short period of time. And the close proximity of the Meepo, like if you do kill the SF, mm -hmm. like you get the blow up, the, the Requiem, the Souls, you probably trade one for one. I think MVP Phoenix are, are decently well set up against that hero. And now they've got actually a good hero to counter the kind of popping potential that the Mevo provides with uh, the Dazzle. But Lynch now picked up by Team Secret means that we're, uh, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to be seeing a Lich Night Stalker duel offlane. Um, because the, the problem is you've got Earthshaker and Dazzle, should be your two supports, very passive heroes. And you can really take advantage of that with a strong duel lane. Yeah. You know, we also plays that I haven't seen him pull out yet, and we always talk about how maybe his hero pull could be limited, but uh, Invoker is something that he has pulled out. I don't know if it's Actually, something that would suit, but I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing it, you know? I think Hani, was, Hani was adamant at ESL that, that we have played the best Invoker of anyone there that weekend. So, and obviously, that, you know, my favorite hero, I would love to see him play that. I, I don't know that, that that's the pick to go to right here. Uh, I actually think there's no, no TA counter yet on MVP Phoenix. I think you could you could look in that direction if you're Team Secret. Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to say there's any kind of counter, they were all very soft. Like the, right. the fact that Templar Assassin is single target focus, Dazzle's a very soft counter in a way, but I think you're absolutely right. Templar Assassin would be a great pickup here. They have the dual lane, so the Lich could actually potentially stack if right. the Templar Assassin gets kind of busy, um, stacking up those Ancients. Your Dire side, which is favorable for the TA as well. And then you just get a strong laning hero, like a laning carry at that, um, yeah, or sorry, a laning phase support at your uh, top lane to make sure that the enemy offlaner from MVP Phoenix, which is going to be the Beastmaster here, doesn't get too much farm. And I think you've just kind of like almost potentially won all three lanes and also had potential recovery if the TA doesn't do that well. I agree. I, I, I just... I don't like how this draft is going so far uh, for MVP Phoenix. Now, we've seen a couple instances in this tournament where the draft has turned dramatically. The, the fifth pick, Clinks, comes to mind as a yeah, pick sure. that really sort of all of a sudden their draft made sense 
at the very end, but I don't necessarily see her off the top of my head that's going to do that here for MVP Phoenix. I, I really like the TA still here for Team Secret as a mid laner. The, the Wind Ranger that we've seen Weehot dominate on is banned out. Uh, I guess it's, it, you probably can't go Meepo here anymore with the single target lockdown for the Beastmaster put together with the other factors that you were mentioning earlier, Cap. And MVP Phoenix have been chewing through so much time, and I, I'm not one to read body language too well, but it seems like they're really going at it to figure out what is going to be best suited for them, and they almost seem a bit puzzled as far as if they're going to keep everything in line. But we go back to Secret now after picking up the Lich. I guess you get Alchemist. Yeah, Alchemist is there. I don't want to see him, but yeah, he is an option. I, I guess it, that that makes sense still here. Uh, that's a, a hero that we uh, has played just just I think the two games, uh, one and one record, but. It's a hero that, that does make sense. Again, you can give the Ag Scepter to the Night Stalker. You can give, I guess, the Ag Scepter to the Lich. But you know, it also goes pretty well with Team Secret style. Yeah, if you, if you do go for it, um, I think you, you can play that kind of aggressive like um, Solar Crest, uh, Blink Tiger style, and actually operate as, um, again, one of those really aggressive heroes that is able to get in the face of MVP Phoenix. And, the, the one thing that I do like wow. about the suggestion of the Alchemist is the fact that I feel like um, MVP Phoenix wouldn't really be able to punish it again with their support duo. But the Shadow Shaman is um, a pretty strong laning phase support oh. this if is you're a up against a single playback. off lane. Yeah. It's just interesting they go for a Shadow Shaman over something like a Lion, which we've already been seeing today. If you were going for Mass Disabler and Lockdown, you could have just easily picked a Lion. But the difference is you don't get that burst, but instead you get those wards. You are on Dire's side, so you have an added benefit way to be able to take down the Roche and an added benefit way to be able to just push for objectives. So yeah. I don't know if they're looking to build around one or the other. I mean, you got a Lich, you got a Shadow Shaman. That's already two big Roche kind of, you know, heroes uh, This is a there. very, very good Slark band. Yeah, way. I was I was actually just going to say MVP Phoenix are probably looking at this look um, before that ban came out because and the it, it, too. it would it would work. Um, I, I don't actually like it that oh, well. Oh, oh hello. Okay, well if you look at Team Secret, they've got a lot of magic damage in the beginning of the game. Man, we yeah, forgot about that guy. They've got you know what though they they do have the physical damage as well. The Rost awards can really hurt Husker. I I don't know. This is a this is a really interesting pick. It's I going think to be, it can work, yeah. but I also think it could get crushed in lane. It's going to be the Shadow Shaman that will be the most significant right. counter that right. Team Secret have against the Huskar because it's not it's the physical damage of the wards as well as the disables the of yeah. the, the Shadow Shaman are, are both really important to have against Husk. What about Weeha playing Lena now for the burst against Huskar? I know he's played it. I wouldn't mind it. Uh, Rude. Rude. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Is, this a, a mid, is this a mid roster yeah. or a mid Night Stalker? It's going to be uh, this is a midnight Night stalker. stalker. Wow, yeah. new look shown from Team Secret here. They yeah, saw EG man. with that four position doom. They're like, well, we could do something cool. We're going to pull out the mid lane Night Stalker. I really like both of these drafts. We're going to get to see a new look from Team Secret and a new hero on the main stage. The Husker out of MVP Phoenix. It's on paper, it's a good fit for how they like to play. My question is, can they protect it in lane? If they can get him off to a good start, this Husker can absolutely destroy the mid game. What do you guys feel, though, about this Night Stalker versus Shadow Fiend mid lane matchup, though? Do you think with the added buffs of Night Stalker, he'll be able to hold his own against the heavily touted Shadow Fiend? If you had one really good ganking hero, I would say that they'd easily be able to shut him down, but they don't. They right. have a they have a Lich, um, a laning focused hero. They have a Shadow Shaman, not very good rotational hero, more laning focused. So um, I actually think that this is going to be really tough. That I, It might be one of those games. It might be one of those games where you just get Huskard and you go, well, we lost to the fifth pick. But we'll have to see if that's going to be the case there, Cap. So. To bring you the action here for what may be one of the last matches, if not the last match, for our day two action here at MLG World Final. We're going to send it over to our casters right now. It's going to be Toby One again with 1437. Gentlemen, please take it away. Awesome. That we will do. MVP versus Secret. Secret one game up. They're going up against the dreaded Huska, but as the panel was saying, there is a lot of magical damage. I'm Toby One here with Theban. We were uh, bantering a little bit about uh, the draft before we were actually kicking off, and you didn't get your Ancient Apparition with the Lich solo mid. I'm, I'm sorry, Theban. Yeah, but instead we get a surprise Huskar into a surprise Brood Mother into a surprise Nice Stalker mid lane. It's a very surprising happens. draft. 
Uh, so how is this meant to work? How is this meant to work? You run Broodmother offlane, you do Lich Knight Stalker mid, and then it's just Puppy pulling, fly, uh, farming up levels, and then letting Envy farm on the top lane. Is that the plan? Yeah. Uh, the Ember Shadow Shaman lane is quite strong because they have a lot of damage output with the Flame Guard. I think mid lane is going to be quite tough for the SF because the Lich and Night Stalker, they have a lot of damage output with their two nukes. And with the bottle nerfs in 6.85, I'm not sure how much uh, the Shadow Fiend can stand on mid lane without having to constantly buy himself flasks. And uh, denying creeps on mid lane and just denying the experience is going to be really hard for the SF. And on top of that, the Shaker is just going to sit around mid lane, hopefully try to help him as much as he can. It doesn't help too, the QO. Uh, the block failed from the Earth Shaker, and they instantly get aggressive over on QO. Weehan moves forward. The Fizz will oh. come out to try and get a bit of revenge, but he went Necromastery level 1, so there's no razors to punish Pylai Dai here. Yeah, that was a slight mistake, I think, from QO. Like, Ah, uh, top lane, Puppy. He is really a bit of a block master. Able to control up March, but not enough to find the kill. That, he body blocked him long enough that Ember Spirit can get in range to get the Flame Guard damage in. Yeah, I think Q is so used to just uh, being babysat mid by a support and just getting last hits with the Necromaster that just, you know, automatically just killed it up. But if he had raises there, he, they definitely would have killed that Lich top lane. Are they going to go again? The Shackles? Puppy's not in range for it. But he's actually having a pretty decent time just getting rid of the boar, and in yeah. fact, he'll be denied up by March. That's one of the things that I was thinking about too, like the fact that you just always got that ether shock when you have either boar, uh, boar or hawk, and the range is pretty damn good, so you should be able to keep that vision down of the Beastmaster. I really like the way that um, Secret are playing their safe lane, especially MB. He's just ignoring his own early game creeps just to keep the Beastmaster level one. They already burned through a flask and two tangles, and it's only a minute into the game, so yep. if he loses any more region, it's going to be really hard for him to stay there. Is it that we're concerned, the fact that Puppy is not finding any levels here? I like think that's completely fine. All they want to do is uh, make the Beastmaster as low as level as possible early, and then they're just going to be able to keep him stuck around level 3, level 4. And he won't be able to find any farm after that. Once the Ember is level 3, then it's really, really hard for this Beastmaster to stay in the lane. Yeah. This dual lane still going ham in the mid. So a level 3 Night Stalker and uh, having almost a level 3 Lich. As he, keep, he can keep sacrificing at the lane. You've still got the uh, levels in there for SF, but that is Necromastery 1. Oh, bottom lane. Are they actually having a crack? It's Misery. He's in real top trouble, but he does. They don't does. have any dust or anything. For is bottom. four Burning Spears enough? I think it is. He's going to burn Ooh. out. He actually burns out in the tree two. line. Yeah. Okay, well, there's your damage. And there's the death, the first blood going the way for MVP. Second game in a row now. I'm not exactly sure how much it really does to the Brood Mother because he's going to get a lot of XP under his tower right now. Whether he died or not, I don't think it's a too March. big of a deal for him. He's dead with the Ether Shock level up there for Puppy. Searing there Chains is. and a level 2 Flame Guard from Eternal Envy. It's an easy burn. So both offlaners will end up dying. Yeah, this level 3 Ember Spirit is no joke. And uh, the Beastmaster has no magical damage to remove the Flame Guard. Mm -hmm. And Kuro's got a lot of stacks prepared for him. Yeah. Like a lot. He's got a quad and a triple stack prepared inside the Radiant Jungle. That's pretty much the only way this SF gets back into the game here anyway. Like this lane is, I would say, probably impossible for him to lane against. They're just keeping it perfectly on their hill, getting a lot of XP. The two dual lanes on mid are like both level 4 at 3 minutes. That's like really, really good. Does this even open it up for almost any other hero? You just combine it with Lich in the mid. Yeah, I, I, I would think so. but. It, help, it, it does a lot more with new heroes because you can like bolt pressure them. Yep. So, like if you have just a random carry, like let's say anti major or whatever, you're just farming the lane. You're not applying as much pressure as you know a nice stalker who's constantly voiding, and then you're getting uh, frost blasted as well. Puppy and Pilot I working to make sure that they can hold on to this top room for Weeha. It's gonna be a bounty rune for him. Just going to push up the levels a little bit more. We are during our first nighttime phase. So, is this almost the point you want to have Nice Dogger rotate out, leave Pylai die in that mid lane? I think it's really confusing what to do right now because Secret are doing well on all their lanes, and I don't really see an opportunity for NS to go somewhere else. Like, maybe he can go bottom, but there's no point because the Ember, the Shadow Shaman, the Lich, they're not high enough level to also help him. 
And just having Brood and Misery alone won't be enough. Misery can get this kill by himself. All those Spirelings is easily going to take out Febby. Up that Fidge was thrown and Heen, yep. He goes for the burst heal, but the Spiders don't die fast enough. They're still going to chase down Heen, and because the webs here, they've got that speed, and Heen, 26 life on him. Misery is still fighting underneath that sentry ward. Top. The Beastmaster falls to the Ember again. It's, it's a level two ether, block, uh, ether shock. It's yeah. This uh, lane ward, like I said, this Beastmaster isn't going to get past level three or level four on this top lane, and just going to keep on farming him the entire time. And this is what happens when you uh, play the lane that well early. Kyori said as well. Your farm. Kyori just comes a little bit further. The, the Fissure from Febby doing some work. Now they're not going to chase him for the void. Not after they force that TP rotation in from March. This is looking a lot like the first game. The Secret are just applying so much pressure on all the lanes. Yep. And uh, it's getting really hard for MVP to get their game going again. But at least this time they do have Shadowfiend, and Shadowfiend can potentially get back in the game really fast with yeah. the stacks that they made for him. They just need him to control these flash farms. And I, ha I hate to say it, but they're on a ticking clock for that as well, because then you've got your Broodmother. Like, Misery's going to start to encroach into the Radiant Jungle shortly and start to take over most of it. Yeah, you don't really want uh, Misery to steal that XP there from the other big triple camp that they have there. They really want their supports to get that with the Shadow Fiend. But what are you going to do? Commit Sentry Wards? Because you just put the Broodmother in the tree line. I if mean, he wants to soak it, he'll soak it. It's inevitable to commit Sentry Wards against... Oh, mid lane, March. Oh, oh it's going to be... Vision. And he at least locks in Weeha, but it's, it's night time. It's like these two heroes, Lich and Nightstalker alone, are just forcing out all of MVP's TPs and their heroes to commit to mid. Yeah. This is like the best thing that can possibly happen for Secret, because now they got a free farming Ember and a free farming Broodmother. Yep. The Broodmother doesn't have perfect CS, like it's only at 25 for two. But he, yeah, early, early level Broodmother is really hard, but like 26 CS right now is like really good for him. Yeah. And the Ember just has a great time. He's 44 for 13. The net worth still has him only barely above that of the Night Stalker, however. But on bottom lane, okay, the Spilings are actually going to get the kill over on oh the Huskar. Man. That is actually a revenge that I think a lot of people will be very happy to see. Yeah. Heen, however, not so happy. The Spiders come forward. Oh, man. It's just too easy for a Broodmother at this point. The supports can't do anything. He doesn't have Shallow Grave. He went the two points up in the heal. You just can't keep him alive. Even if you do Shallow Grave, you can't run away from the Spiders. Their heroes are not meant to fight against the brood. The only hero who can actually stay down there is probably the Shadow Fiend. But if you if you move what the Huskar into mid, I mean that's that's the issue, right? Like you fifth pick Huskar, but Seeker had the overall last pick with the Brood Mother, and this is like the counter right now. Yep. And this is very problematic for MVP. They're gonna find a stopper for this as soon as possible. And Kuro has rotated down with the Sentry Ward down. He'll just raise up those Spinelings. Nice little way to get a whole crap ton of souls. And Weeha as well as Pilot Eye, they're not that great at pushing into the tier 1 tower, so Weeha goes on the hunt instead. He's got Darkness available, but Febby bought himself a little bit of space, not anymore. Just wants to TP out. The sun's already been used by Weeha, so he'll have to let him go. Yeah, this Shaker's going to have a really hard time finding levels in this game because all the lanes are getting pressured, and uh, the Shadowfiend already did the stacks, and he didn't really get any XP from it. He invested all his time to defending the Shadowfiend and stack. But he's also going to be stuck at level 3 for some time. They're coming top. Darkness gets tri triggered, so Weehar and Pompey can keep on fighting. And they're looking for March. He's not level 6 just yet. But if they find this pick off, which they will, he's over in the tree line. He'll do some decent damage with the axes. But if this happens a little bit later into the game, they can just keep pushing. Because you'll have Mass Serpent wards up shortly. Oh, kill. Goes for the kill with the Invis rune. Yeah, she caught him out. With no really Requiem, nice. just... Uh, just raises. Yeah. I, I think Secret just don't have the vision right now on the map. Like, they have one ward up, but I feel they should have a lot better vision at the moment. Well, Kyo finds the Ember Spirit, trying to raise him out, but well, see, there's no Searing Chains, and there's no Flame Guard as well. So Ember be forced oh, to use his shackle. Spirit, but they're going to get the Fissure over, so Puppy in a little bit of trouble. With the raises to connect, Febby can't get the Sun off. I don't know if that's it. Yeah, it won't be enough damage to kill off the Shadow Shaman. In fact, he just turns around and shocks him. Here comes the Lich and the Ember again to top. The Shackles from Puppy's going to do the work. He has to back up, however. SF will get the Razors off, but if they can kill off QO, they're still worth it. The Lich is going to bounce up and over to QO. He splits himself off from the Creep Wave. But Epi's too low. He does not want to fight this. Yeah. Pu Pu 
Puppy actually saved the uh, Envy, I think. He got a shackle off on the Shaker before he got the Fissure. So, he might have actually died to the SF. Not sure, though. Well, Puppy has been a sacrificial support for a long time. He wanted to sacrifice himself much longer. But I kind of want to see him getting a little bit more space. You've already got the Lich up to level 7. Get those Mass Serpent Wars and just go to town. Smoke up from Shaker and Shadowfiend. Looks like uh, they're drawing the they're line. looking to mid. Yeah, they probably want to kill the hero who's gonna come mid to get take XP. And that would be Puppy. Oh, and the haste rune. There's no rune. There's no word on uh, secret. Uh, bottom lane. lane. Misery gonna be left on at the moment. And uh, okay, that's not enough burning. That's only one point up in the wards. But the dazzle still dies. The mass amount of broodlings that were down there. But they are gonna get the perfect moment. It's over on Weeha. Requiem of Souls not required. Raise one. Raise two. Just beat into him, and there goes Weeha. Much. Just sticking around to help out. He did have that raw available. Yeah, that was a very nice kill because that was a lot of uh, much needed XP for the Beastmaster and Shaker. BM is six now. And they're just gonna three man this tower. Yep. What's probably gonna do? Roar. Apart from die, the raw, raise one and uh, raise two. Both are able to connect. And with the Haste Rune, QO can keep pushing for this one and find probably a third kill. Goes for Pilot Eye trying to use that tree line perfectly. Able to do so. Gets another Frost Blast off, but QO up to the hillside. And we'll start to bottle this way up. That T1 tower is still not dead. And Secret, the TPing yeah, nice in for this Febby. He's got Echo Slam as well as Fissure. And yeah, a very smart cancel there from Weeha. It would have been suicide. Yeah, it looks like Secret are just uh, reacting the wrong way right now to MVP's aggression. They can just lose one hero, but... Oh, Puppy goes for the Fissure. Ah, oh, the Requiem of Souls, a little bit off target. There's no mana for the, uh, for the Echo Slam. And okay. Febby's locked inside the tree line. Now he does actually have it. Tries to pump thing. into Puppy, but it will not be enough. Not with Weeha around here. And we'll just get a, a free trade off. You do burn the mass up from once, however. Yeah, they probably could have just uh, stunned the Shadow Shaman and backed off as soon as they saw the wards done. But they got a bit too greedy there for another kill. But their MVP did seem to be like on a roll before that. So it's understandable that they just want to keep on getting kills. You know the terrible thing about what's just happened here? Secret three-man smoke. They're going to run towards the top and kill off March. But they smoked. If it was daytime, they smoked underneath an observer ward. But oh, because yeah. darkness was triggered, there was no vision for MVP to see that smoke happen. That is unfortunate. And Team Secret get an easy kill on the Beastmaster. Meanwhile, down south, this prude mother <laughs> continues to life. farm. <laughs> you can give him extra frost armor. It's not as though he had enough. It's just a level one. It but having like, having a medallion means he can go from Roshan pretty soon too. Yeah. And the Solar Crest is quite nice against the Huskar. The mischance on him and the minus armor really hurts a lot. Yeah. Seems like this Huskar isn't really like effective at all. This last pick through doing a lot of work. Because by now it's like when you really want Huskar to shine or maybe go Rosh or finish taking all the tier ones, but Mm -hmm. MVP will have to do it without the Huskar. Beastmaster seems like he wants to get a gank going on this Broodmother, but it's going to be hard for him to get in there. These Spiderlings give a lot of vision. Oh, oh there's your jump. Goes after Misery, slows him down, but the Lich Oddy's flying in. The roar will be there, and they have to split themselves up a little bit more because Huskar's taking too much damage from this. It's just too easy to bounce it around. The Lich Oddy will do its work. The Beastmaster, okay, is up on top lane. The Fissure flies out. Uh, you did lose your, your Broodmother in this, but Puppy gets those mass open ones down, and QO locked in position. They've got no other controls, but with the shackles, there she is. Puppy holding the SF in position. The mass open ones need to focus him down before Puppy is still alive until he moves forward. He'll find the last hit. He'll lose his life for it. Maybe that Fissure from Febby can give him a little bit more freedom. It's a three for two trade off, and okay, there's no freedom. We are walks in. Freedom was denied. No, Shaker is the sole survivor of MVP after that. Oscar will go back to bottom lane to defend the tier two. And this tower's almost dead. If you lose this tier two tower so early on, like you basically have to give up. I almost say like your tier one tower as well in mid. But the Radiant Jungle no longer belongs to you. Yeah. It, right now, Seeker can do the wraparound move with the Broodmother onto the mid lane, and that would do quite some nice damage onto that tower. And they're, they're actually just gonna run top. To they just go for Febby. The flame guard's gonna burn out. There is a TP coming in the tree line. It's gonna be QR. 
And now he's just going to spirit and jump himself away. There's a lot more support coming here. But Kuro has been so aggressive that it, it kind of flags the fact that they're being that there's there's help. And yeah. the observer, that's actually an obs ward in the lane to there's see a it. Split push on mid lane too. I think uh, Secret understand that all MVP want to do is go for the tier ones with five heroes, and they're just going to go for the trade right now. This is the best move Secret can make here for sure. And we going for the slant of fist and chain on Heen. Can't hit it perfectly. You're right, there goes your tier one tower. Yeah, Huskar will bottoms. take one He's and take a lot of damage too. <laughs> Oh, what you should go echo that. <laughs> so many spiders. It would be good money. Having the echo on cooldown, however, maybe not the greatest thing in the world. I mean, it's so hard to get echo off in this game with Nice Talker and uh, them just pressuring the Airshaker anyway. If he walks up, he's going to get hexed or silenced or something, so might as well use it. Just do it for the money, get, get the blink dagger, get, get and then. Get the little spiderlings, yeah. Mm. MV's on the run out of here. MVP, though. Moving very aggressively into the mid. The ball will slow down Pylai Dai until then. Okay. The side of Fist Searing Chain catching out both the Huskar as well as the Shadow Fiend. I'm actually wondering too, how long will the Huskar jump? The interaction with the Ember Spirit. Mm -hmm. If he actually gets life break and the Ember Spirit jumps to a remnant, does it break the like life a, break? Is I it think a it's distance like thing? 1200 range. After okay. like. 1200 range. If you go further than that, then the life break doesn't work. Okay, so we can't take him back to base. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure, but I believe it's 1200 range. Does that actually mean that heroes like Queen of Pain could break free of that? Like you blink, you blink out? Yeah. Same with blink dagger. So. Mm. If you blink far, far away enough, you won't be able to follow you. Might be worth getting an early blink dagger. I don't know if it would be worth getting a Ember Spirit. Because, you know, if that wasn't the case, then you'd like TP back to base and he's like chasing you all the way to Fountain. Yeah, I know. That's, that's just what I was thinking. That's it's a like nice death for a Huskar. It's like we just oh, found Huskar. our old fashioned like Fountain Hook. <laughs> but it's all self inflicted. Looks like uh, Seeker just gonna take their time right now. They're, I don't feel like Secret are really in any sort of rush. MVP is the one who just wants to go for the tier one, just keep going for the objectives, get their farm through that. There are a decent time to do it. The problem is this mana on QR, he's using Razors to burn through the lane and doesn't really have enough to go for both Razors, Requiem and the mech charge during a team fight. And look at Secret, they're already like trading, creep skipping bottom, so the only play MVP have here is like, Maybe they go rush and sacrifice that to tier two. Yeah, that's that's what they're gonna do. Puppy CPing out, so he'll push out the bottom lane. The tier two town's actually not being taken. It's the tier one on the top lane that Weeha will finish, and they're pinging out. They know what MVP is up to. So it's gonna be 30 more seconds look, for nighttime to come out. Though. This, look this at Misery rush is gonna go. die before nighttime. Misery's just running the spilings in. He triggers the dust very early on, so that won't be there later on. And you're right, Roshan will end up dying. And they won't have nighttime either yet. It's like 20 more seconds. Okay, so Secret doesn't doesn't want to fight this. Misery just wants to They're bail out, get to back in Viz. The oh, BTs are coming the in though. That's coming on the back on the of one of the spiders. The side of Fist Searing Chain not going to connect. The Hex will be there and March gets ward trapped. He's got no way to get out of this. The Shackles yes. from Poppy making sure there's no extra roar as well. They'll take out two. You burn the wards for an Earthshaker and a Beastmaster. But you at least get the Aegis up on the Husker, who now is finishing up. Like, he's got Sunge. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a halberd for sure. The mischance is like really, really strong on Huskar. Sometimes we see Solar Crest Huskars, but I think with the nerf to Solar Crest, uh, the halberd is just stronger because we get strength from it. The issue he's gonna have though, if he if he has the uh, the halberd, he won't actually have a, t a room for a TP scroll until this Aegis is burned. Yeah. So if he does strike that Sanji out to him now, he'll have to be careful about the split movement of Secret. I think he can't help it anyway. He bought a TP scroll as well, so maybe he drops the wand, triggers the wand charges now. No. He's just gonna leave the TP scroll on the courier. Rely on the Aegis, the immortal. Shadow almost has his uh, SNY. Is that really the play here? Instead it's of going good. something it's like a BKB? It's very good stats. Uh, BKB is okay, but you want like some sort of filler item before you get to your BKB anyway. And SNY just does that. It makes them a lot tankier and helps them farm faster. That's the classic smoke to break the invis. They've got two dust charges dust. as well, but Misery 
He runs the one way that they are, they are not coming. Yeah, probably Misery feels it, that they're like coming down that way, so. Because he doesn't see anyone else on the map either, and top lane is like pushed into. He's coming down. Two. The smoke breaks on him. So they realize that Misery is behind him. Actually, that might. No, that was just the timeout in the Yeah, smoke. that was just a timeout. Oh, Remember. okay. Oh, that doesn't oh, tell MVP is, anything. Heen, shallow grave it up. Get oh, yourself out of here. here. Damn, and these filings are going to kill him. There's no way out. Like, there is no way. Okay, with the raises, there is a way out. There is hope. Now they need to just go and farm out the lane. Secret's already starting to push into their towers. Yep. Top is going to take a lot of damage here. Envy's actually 100 gold away from that Battle Fury. Yeah, too. that's really good timing for uh, Ember to get Battle Fury with the items that he already has. He's in really good shape here. Alright, so Misery continues nice to farm. Nice eggs as well. Already? Yeah. I Lich, suppose. Lich will probably buy him a gem. Actually, he's going for Atos on the Lich. Interesting item purchase. I wonder who that's really meant for. It's uh, It provides uh, really good stats and it's quite nice to catch as well. Like you can Ato some Earthshaker or Dazzle or whatever, it's not going anywhere after that. Then you can just walk up and just nuke him. So. But I wonder if you'll finish Atos or buy a gem first, because right now it's a really good time to have a gem for the Night Stalker. He already has his level 2 ult as well, so... There's your Battle Fury. Okay, Atos first. your Atos. Okay. Screw control abilities. <laughs> what do you actually think about the Broodmother? Because he went for a Vlad's. A lot of Broods we've been seeing going for Orchid builds. Is it almost worthwhile going something in? Like I know I was, I was flagging this one during a couple of the uh, the qualifier oh, casts. Yeah, he's so dead, man. Uh, like, there's no way to survive that. The kill secure is trying to come in from Weeha, and he's going to get it too. But do you go something like like a Necro book and try and finish this game over on Misery? Is uh, Necro still uh, powerful enough on a Broodmother? It is really good, but I think he's in no rush. He just wants the armor items to help support his team and be able to fight as five at some point. Like, the Vlad's does a lot for his spiders. They make them significantly stronger as well. But if you're going to go for the full armor, I don't know what's that. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to think really about how they end this he game. Can still get, like, he can still get Necrobots now. It's like yep. He has 4,000 gold, but I think he would rather get like Desolator or something. The physical damage is just really strong against the Husker. Fabi, realize that both of the stuns were used, but there's still more than enough damage from Secret to kill them off on the top. And Weeha's got so much money as well. Like, if you really want to see an armor change up, you could even build into something like like the AC on him. If you're, try if you're trying to force this. You could also just go into everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, Misery. They find him with the weave, but this brood is very, very quick. So even when the race is being, being made by Misery here. It's like every time you go for this brood mother, you're just losing so much on the map when you don't kill him. If all your other lanes are getting pushed in, and it's difficult to get back into a good position. He's finding, you know he's finding couriers, he's finding heroes. Yeah, MVPs will run out of here, QR. He's just pressuring him back. He's got a lot of one corner. charges. Like, one charge is a mech. They shouldn't be able to find the kill on QR, but the Rod of Atos being used. Damn, the range on that is quite large. Yeah. It's very heavy, slow, 60%. And if you look at the stats it gives, it gives you like 10 more int and 100 more health for what it costs. So it's very nice. Cost efficient. We have bought the gem himself. Okay. He's not going to rely on his teammates to do it. Yeah. Poppy's getting so much money too. He's got a blink dagger. By sitting up on this top lane now, he'll actually hit level 11. Um, and he's already started the point booster, so into the Aghanim Scepter upgrade for the wards. There's a lot of stuff coming the way of Team Secret. This While Huska, like, he's he's about to be able to pick up this Talisman, so the Halbert has arrived for him. Yeah, but the Aghanim's Shadow Shaman is a really good way to deal with, like, a, a strong Huska. If he gets super farm later, you know, has some AC, a lot of armor and stuff, even then this uh, Shadow Shaman with Aghanim does insane amount of physical damage. It's, r it's really hard to fight against uh, the Shadow Shaman. If Puppy actually controls his wards, can you even armlet toggle underneath the wards? Um, I think at that point in the game, it's just hard to armlet toggle anyway. Like, you will die even if you armlet toggle. That's how much damage the wards do. Well, problems arising for MVP. 
And already Eternal Envy is building into the Monkey King, but to try and counter that evasion of the Husker. Yeah, he is super, super farmed with Ember Spirit. With a Demon Edge and a double damage turn. Yeah. I I'm not even sure how Secret find all this farm on the map because they have like an insane amount of uh, team net worth, total net worth this game. Well, they've just been taking everything from MVP. Yeah. Like they farm up their own jungle, they keep pushing down all the lanes, they farm up the Radiant jungle, and then they even take out the Ancient stacks. Like, I haven't seen MVP do an Ancient area for a very, very long time. Ooh, looks like uh, <laughs> the Night Stalker is going to get Octarine this game. That's That means uh, his ult is only going to be down for like 10 seconds in between. So even if it's daytime, they get 10 seconds of daytime. And that's it. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. QR, get out of here, man. He's making a break for the tree line. But if he sticks around against Greedy and goes for the creep wave first, he's going to lose his life. Into the trees, there's the Rod of Atos. Pile I die. He's holding on to the ulti to QR. Can't TP out of here. And now that Ember Spirit's also arrived, he doesn't even need the ulti. It's just Frost Blast. His spirit jumps over. The Requiem's being faded out. QR is still going to let it rip. But now, 17 1 charges. He goes for another raise. Can't kill Pile I die, even with the death ulti. The Broodmother will actually find the kill. Yeah, Misery just, you know, he's, you know, he's just sitting there laughing, chuckling a little. Hey, I got the kill. Oh, he's, he's up to 6.3k. Yeah, yeah. 6.3k gold. He's just enjoying gold. his time, you know. He just, just got. Just spend some money. So much gold, just chilling. You don't doesn't care. Th th you don't gain interest on the gold you have uh, inside your account, man. I mean, all, all he's been doing this game is like juking them, you know, baiting like five heroes to bot lane, and then. Just farming away, saving his gold. It's Maybe a BKB. Okay, he bought the BKB. So boring, Mr. I thought he was doing the, you know, the 10k gold challenge, just not <laughs> buy anything until you get 10k gold. Wait, there's actually a challenge for that? Please I don't, don't tell me it's like one of those compendium challenges. I remember I was playing with Misery one time and just didn't buy anything. It was like, I'm doing the 10k gold challenge, so <laughs> I thought that was it. It always frustrates us, Castle, because we just sit here going, what are they doing? Like, is it mass indecision? Yeah, March, yeah. you could be in trouble. There goes your Hex. There's a lot more support than Puppy. He just commits the wards. He doesn't care. He wants the kill, and he's going to find it over on March. One more attack. Ah, it's there. The Fissure. March cancels the That's TP, but he just lost his oh, gem of True Sight. That is huge. Oh, they don't see it. They don't know that he had a gem. No, they should. They no, they see it. They definitely see it. There's observer wards as well as mass open wards. Now they go for the shackle over on the Earthshaker. Weehar's right behind it. The fissure will still be able to come out as the Echo Sand keeps the control coming, but the Lich Holdy will end up killing off Ebi as a bounce back over to the Huskar. Not where they want to be, but yeah, that's misery with what? his BKB diving in almost to the fountain. This is a message being sent by a Secret to MVP in this trashing of a 2-0. It's already 24 to 8. It's been a very rough run for the Koreans. Yeah, this, seriously, this last pick, Broodmother, really, really screwed them up. You know, you're thinking, you know, Huskar, last pick from MVP, but nope. <laughs> the man who has the last word is the one who's gonna get out alive. Hate to say, sounds not being played. Dagger, get yourself out of here. The roar goes on the Ember Spirit, Eternal Envy. Caught out, looking to die in style. He goes for the slide of fist damage, and the spiraling are still in there. In the kill over on the Dazzle, the Ember Spirit got the Searing Chains, and now it's just a man mode. Misery versus Huskar. Unfortunately, more of a man is the Brute Mother, and that will be a five hero wipe on MVP. The bottom rank's taken out. The mid will probably follow directly after, but it won't have enough time. GG is the call. Team Secret will beat out MVP and secure themselves the last spot in the semifinals. <sighs> Solid man. I don't even know what MVP were meant to do. It's really hard. Like, they just got, again, they got pressured in all their lanes. That's exactly what Seeker's plan was, just win the early game. Well, we'll see if the analysts agree with you. Was winning the early game the key to victory? Let's ask the panel. Thank you so much, Toby and Tevin, and I guess we could say we can agree with them. They are yeah, the experts you, after all, but... The yeah, answer it, is yes. <laughs> and we're done. No, uh, it was an admirable effort. I certainly love seeing the Huskar come out. It's a spicy, awesome, manly pick. But Secret already had a plan in motion. It was being able to overtake the early game. And as Steven said, pressure, pressure, pressure. And if at about, you know, 15 minutes into the game, you're not seeing Huskar near the top of that net worth and starting to dominate, something is not going right.
Now, look, I, I don't think that this game was necessarily a stomp a priori. I, I think this game, the problem with it was, if you looked at the lineups on both sides, it was probably going to snowball in one direction or another. I was watching yeah. the game down with, with Matt, and we were kind of, the consensus kind of was, look, if the Husker works, this game could be over in 15 minutes. If the Brood works, the game's probably going to be over in 30. Yeah, and it, it, it was, was the second. It was literally the battle of the last picks. Now, right. the problem was that the Broodmother was the matchup against the Huskar in the laning right. phase, and that hero actually works out really well against Huskar. You, first of all, you've got uh, a single target focused hero that isn't able to deal with Brood things. You provide a lot of physical damage as a Broodmother, which is quite good, for obviously, versus the Huskar, and they didn't really have the supports to deal with it. They had the Earthshaker um, and maybe the Beastmaster Wild Axes, but that was never really going to be enough to shut out a Brood. And you know what? I think we can actually see an example of that. We we have our Ben Q best play for this match, and I believe it was Misery and his Broodmother. Early on in the game, he got this spunky little double kill here. Let's let's go ahead and see exactly where it went down. It does yeah, look this, like this a, wasn't exactly. I mean, this isn't like a jaw-dropping play, but this was really the time that, yeah, the that they started point. to take control of the game. You see that there are a bunch of stacks in the Radiant Jungle. You know, MVP really planning on trying to abuse that Radiant side. Misery's getting plenty done in lane here. Uh, they're, tr uh, they're trying to be aggressive, and that, that middle lane, the Night Stalker Lich lane, really prevented MVP from applying the kind of early pressure they like to apply. Now, I think this is a little bit early. We might have had a little bit of a miscommunication here. Where are my kills at? <laughs> yeah. I'm supposed to see a double kill here. I was about to say, I'm, I'm like, stacks. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what position we're in that Misery's going to be able to get a uh, uh, double kill out of this. It's but. coming down here in, in, in not too long. because It happens right at, I think, at 707. But one of the things that MVP were doing quite well in the beginning is that they were making sure to protect the SF. He was getting OKCS, okay like the, the first, like, minute they yeah, look kind of bad but yeah i uh -oh. mean look at those broodlings yeah, oh. you get the broodlings stacked up and then he's going to come around on the backside and get the dazzle as well this is the time when the game just started to look completely oh. out of control and, and that's brood brother really like, there's not really much you can do about that at that point in time. Like, it's the fifth pick. Like, sometimes you get fifth pick Huskard, sometimes you get fifth pick Broodmother. They were both, like, significantly strong pickups, but the Broodmother was obviously better because you won the laning phase with right. it, and that's all that really matters. No, and I, I thought that the other, the other part of that equation, right, the reason why the Brood worked so well was because that then also shifted the Night Stalker Lich uh, mid lane duel. We were concerned early on with how, if they were to run that Night Stalker or what hero they were gonna pick, how that hero was gonna do up against that QOSF. Because again, we've seen QO take over so many games for MVP. But I think it, in one fell stroke with that Brood pick, they just made it so hard for MVP to do anything with those lanes. Yeah, if there was a normal offlaner that you would be able to zone now decently well with just the Dazzle, then you would see the split focus of the Earthshaker, you know, helping out the middle lane and stacking, Radiant side SF, would actually be able to offset the right. advantage that Lich gives you in lane, which is the immediate thought when I saw that. And you um, saw the stacks, right? I mean, yeah, they exactly. had the stacks early, it was just that the, the fact that the Brood was so dominant in lane, they didn't have control of that space anymore. Yeah, and in fact, there was a lot of openings with the aggression from the Night Stalker and them forcing, as we right. saw in the beginning of the clip, right? The, the force rotations over also leaves in a lot of openings for the Broodmother to not just get experience in CS, but also find, you know, situations where the Huskar's left alone. No, I agree. I mean, that it actually ended up being fortuitous that we saw that whole sequence because it just sort of, it showed that those lanes were so strong for Secret that it was MVP that were just, we're used to seeing them take the fight to the other team. And it was MVP in a lot of that earlier game that was, were the ones scrambling to take the pressure off their lanes. All right, with that, that has concluded our whole group stage run. We're going to take a moment to look over the journey that has led us up to this point, gentlemen. we got to remember our very first matchup, of course, was that very enticing Evil Genius's first monkey business matchup where it looked like Evil Geniuses were going to be hot off the streets right at the start where they got that game one victory. But the monkey business were like, that was our warm up. Now we're going to take over. And they just blew right past them. They went on to Virtus Pro, 2 0 them, and just instantly secured their spot in that championship playoff bracket. And they had all of today to rest, sign autographs, enjoy, and watch the competition unfold before them. Below that, LGD and Virtus Pro. Virtus Pro were able to blast past them. And then, of course, we saw the fate thereafter. LGD were the first team eliminated when they met up against Evil Geniuses down in the losers match. Evil Geniuses were able to move past them. Then we saw earlier today their matchup against Virtus Pro, a very, very close series, but it was Evil Geniuses there in the end. 
able to pull it off. So they are also moving in into the championship playoff bracket along with Monkey Business. Now we'll, let's go ahead and flip over to Group B. Whoop. Wow, what a nice little flip right there. So at the start, it was Team Seeker going against MVP Phoenix the first time, which they quickly 2 0 them then. C Deck Gaming were able to out inch Cloud 9 to 1. And as they moved on forward, C-Deck were able to get revenge from ESL1 New York. They beat out Secret, and they secured the first spot for Group B in the championship bracket. On the lower end, Cloud9, we saw earlier in our very first matchup for Day 2, they simply just could not get in their Cloud9 groove, and MVP were able to pull it out. Now we just witnessed Team Secret able to still make it strong, and they are going to be claiming that final spot into the championship bracket. So, let's see it. The championship bracket and what is in store for us tomorrow. Boop, 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 against boop, 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 boop. It should be awesome. <laughs> Tech is like, whoa, wow. what the heck's happening yeah, They're then? like, oh, God. Well, uh, did they switch the, did we they switch the graphics over to Reborn, too? Yeah, right, yeah, right. So Cap, it's all on Cap from what earlier. He I, just... I just show up, things break. It was standard. That's, that's just what I do. They're going to go ahead and quickly resolve it, but what should so, be. No, the, 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 we, look, <laughs> we don't need graphics, guys, because these yeah. series tomorrow are, are, are absolutely yeah. what, what we do have is the schedule, so as we okay. go ahead and take a look at the schedule, I'll go ahead and just verbalize the actual bracket that's going to be going on. It's going to be Monkey Business going against T Team Secret, yeah. and then we have on the other part of the bracket, it is going to be CDEC going against Evil Geniuses in that <laughs> TI5 rematch. Both of those oh, sound awesome. Are you kidding me? I mean, with... With the form that CDEC showed in putting away Team Secret 2-0 and EG having delivered the two most dramatic series so far here at the event, we are going to get to see a TI5 Finals rematch, and it's going to be electric. And there is our schedule. And starting at 9.45, you'll get to see all of our handsome faces for our little pregame show. But we get right down to business. <laughs> at 10 a.m., it's going to be Monkey Business going against Team Secret. And then the follow-up match is going to be CDEC going against Evil Geniuses. And that will lead us into the one and only grand final matchup. And that will be a best of five. Of course, all their matches being a best of three. Grand finals, though, a full best of five. Winner's going to be walking away with over $100,000 in that wow. sweet MLG title. Should be an awesome one. Gentlemen, between those two matches, which one are you most excited about? Um, for me, I mean, I already pointed out that I felt like Monkey Business and Team Secret would be the like best two teams to see in the finals. So I'm actually really interested to see their semifinal matchup and how that's actually going to break down because I feel like Team Secret is, out of the four teams that are in the playoffs, that Team Secret would be the most telling team to face up against Monkey Business and see where Monkey Business go from there. Are they actually going to be good enough to be able to take on Team Secret's uh, aggressive style mixed with um, a lot of talent and also like a strategical advantage that I feel Team Secret oftentimes brings to the table. Monkey Business really outdrafted their opponents in order to get here. Um, so I feel like that if, if you are able to offset that drafting advantage, is Monkey Business still going to be the same kind of dominant team that we've seen? you agree with that, Nahaz? Do you think that's the match to look for? Absolutely not. No, oh. I, 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 gave, I mean, I gave you my pitch before for EG and CDC, and I, I just... I am already frothing at the mouth over this series. I think not only are you going to get to see two teams that play incredibly exciting Dota, you have the added sort of variable of the meta being very new, both teams still adjusting. You're going to get to see these players outside their comfort zones. You're going to get to see new lineups. You're going to get to see big plays. Tune in tomorrow. It's going to be amazing. So let's go ahead and close the curtain for day number two and be back here tomorrow morning at 9.45 a.m. for our pre-show because we got to find out what team is going to be walking away with that title. I'm Cuddle Guy. That's Cap. That's Nahas. We will see you tomorrow morning for more MLG action. Take care.